Spoiler alert! If you haven't watched the first video about the Peak Design Travel Tripod, I go through it in depth from beginning to end, all about the features and all the things you need to know about the Travel Tripod, how much it is, when it drops, all that good stuff. Make sure you hit a link up here or down below and watch that first because that is going to be a perfect primer for what we're gonna be talking about next. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about my experiences with travel tripods, how they've sucked over the years, and where I think the travel tripod is really going to be a game changer. I'm also gonna close off with my initial thoughts about the product because I don't have it in hand, where I think the travel tripod is gonna do amazingly well, and other areas which I think will just be kinda of so-so. So these will be kind of things that I hope will give you some thoughts in terms of whether to back the project or not. I'll also be closing off with some initial thoughts about the product, where I think the travel tripod is gonna do really well, other areas which I think will just be kind of meh, so-so, it'll do the job, um, and ultimately to give you some ideas for whether you should back the project or not. So first, a history lesson on tripods that I've used over the past 10 years. So this is where it's really interesting and really indicative of kind of where I've been moving towards. So I started off with a Benro. So this is a Benro aluminum tripod, and this is the Angel series. It's the A169M8. Uh, so this is part of their travel line. Benro is a, is a China brand. Uh, I need something that was affordable. Uh, this one fit the bill and it, it serviced me for a couple of years and I actually traveled with this to Southeast Asia, through all of Asia back in 2012 when I first started going awesome places. Uh, and I quickly learned that this thing is really heavy. So this thing is 3.3 pounds, uh, a little bit heavy for me, but I liked how it was compact in terms of height. Um, it is kind of chunky and fat, uh, so I had to carry around uh, this with a uh, bag that it came with and it had its own side strap and things like that. Uh, it served me well, but I learned quickly that it was too heavy. So the tripod that I'm filming with right now, this is something that I picked up in Hong Kong. So another trip that I went on and I was like, man, I really need carbon fiber. So everyone's been talking about it. Needed the ball head, of course, but carbon fiber was my next mission. So later on, when I went to Hong Kong, I picked up a, another kind of cheaper tripod that was carbon fiber. It's by a German company called Role, something that seemed to be hard to find in North America, but it's a Role that was carbon fiber. It had uh, three sections to it, and it had a leg that could be converted into its own monopod, which I thought was really cool. Never really used it that way, but the feature was always there. And I liked it because it was light, it was compact, and it worked really, really well. But unfortunately, after heavy use, because uh, it was my go-to tripod, that eventually one of the legs kind of uh, ripped open, fell apart, I couldn't put it back in. I think I lost the pin uh, that kept it in place along the way. So I looked for something a little bit different. And that's when I landed on this guy. This is uh, another China branded company. It's called Siriu. I must have browsed through a ton of websites to, to find this, but ultimately I was looking for a tripod that was incredibly compact in terms of just footprint, that it was very small, um, that it folded down to a small height, uh, could be folded open into a very usable max height as well. But ultimately as a carbon fiber uh, tripod, I needed this to be very, very light. And this is actually incredibly light. Uh, one of the things that I'm, I'm wondering about, because this is actually lighter than the travel tripod, it comes in at, I think, two pounds, which is incredible uh, how this will compare with the Peak Design tripod. Now, I've, I've loved this. This has been incredible to use. It has three uh, segments to it, twist to open and lock. Works really well. The last tripod I'll talk about is the Joby. This is the Gorilla Pod that I basically got for selfie video purposes. So you'll see that um, the Going Awesome Places brand has transitioned over the years into doing a lot more video. And so I knew I needed something for that. So my big trip to Taiwan, 
This is a tripod that I mainly use to shoot selfie videos at a wide angle and it worked really well. Uh, but again, like this tripod, it was really singular in terms of purpose and use. Uh, if I wanted to do some serious time lapses or I wanted to do some serious long exposure shots, it just didn't have the height that I needed for a lot of the shots. So that's when I always went back to the Serio. So now that you know a little bit about my travel tripod history, I can now delve into certain things that have been a real struggle for me that is relatable for hopefully all of you guys watching out there, that uh, there are things about tripods that really suck and I didn't really realize could be improved until I looked at the specs for the travel tripod by Peak Design. So I'm gonna start with my Siriu. This is my current tripod, it's super light. I'm not gonna go into the specs because we can compare specs all day long about weight, packed height, max height, all those different things, diameter as well. Uh, this one does already an incredible job for me, but there's certain things that I really, really hate. So here are my gripes about uh, the tripod as it stands today. I think a lot of you guys have very similar type of tripods with ball heads. Uh, but yeah, let's talk about the ball head first and these knobs. Um, I understand what they do. Uh, one knob uh, allows you to, to kind of articulate the, the ball itself and the other one allows you to rotate uh, 360 degrees. Honestly, I never use uh, the 360 degree knob. Um, I think it's a legacy feature from video that allows you to pan smoothly. Uh, but for how I use my tripod, that's not something that's very common even when I am shooting video. The other thing is that um, I, I get kind of confused. I know I shouldn't be because they're different sizes, but having to make sure that I lock both knobs whenever I have my tripod in place and I'm going for a shot, I need to, to kind of do two things at the same time. I remember to do both because if I knock the camera by accident, uh, it's gonna rotate and um, I, won't be, I won't have the same framing as I had before. So that is the first part. The other part is where the plate goes in to the ball head. Uh, most will have this. I know there are quick release heads out there, but most will have a knob here. So it's really simple. You, un you unlock it, you place the plate in, and then you twist to clamp it back in. Now, uh, short story here is that last year I had a problem with my Joby tripod that has the same mechanism. I put my camera in, I thought I had locked it in place, uh, but I was on a ledge, high up, trying to take a night shot. Um, somebody knocked the tripod, I held it in place, but it tilted forward and I literally saw the plate slide out and my camera proceed to fall to the concrete. That was not cool. Uh, so camera busted, lens damaged as well. And so that was a uh, lesson for me because I, from, from that point forward, I always made sure I double checked to make sure that this was truly tight. Now, if I had a quick release mechanism where it slid and locked, in place and I heard that click, then that's something that I wouldn't have had to really worry about because I knew it was in place. And so I think the Peak Design Travel Tripod is really going to solve that problem. I, I, I'm so glad I don't have to worry about twisting to lock anymore. Another thing about the ball head is that the the, the 360 motion of this that is, um, is a, a feature for the ball head really messes me up because if I do tighten it and I twist it, oh, the, the tripod, uh, ball head comes loose. And so that has been really annoying actually. I hope I'm not the only one because if it, there's this kind of constant struggle between this being tightened uh, to make sure I'm locked in place but if I accidentally hit it, uh, the head starts twisting and, and coming unhinged. So I'm constantly finicking with this, making sure that the head is first tight to the tripod and then making sure that this knob is also tight. So that is another annoying part about tripods as they are today. The other part uh, that I gotta talk about is when you collapse it all together. So this is something that happens all the time because if you want your tripod to close up perfectly, it never does. So this should all the legs should be straight, but because the knobs are in the way, uh, that I can't close it down fully. So another step when I pack it all up is that I need to make sure all the knobs are loose so that I can make sure that the, the, the ball head is in a good position so it doesn't get in the way of anything and I twist it um, around so that the knobs don't touch the legs. 
So that is incredibly annoying. That's like another step that I have to do every time I pack it up or I get into a situation where the legs just kind of like are in the way of the knobs or the knobs are in the way of the legs and, and it just doesn't uh, come together very flush. So that is another thing that the Peak Design Travel Tripod has, has built into the design is gonna solve pretty much all of that. The last thing will have to be the deployment. And so all tripods, again, flip out this way. So it's kind of inverted. And then you got the center column that's already up. Uh, and to put it away, you got, you got to hit these clips and then it mounts backwards. You got to flip three times and then you're done. Uh, with the travel tripod, it's already in this, um, it's already in the upright position. So all you do is flick, flick, flick and your, your tripod is, is ready to go. You don't need to invert it and bring it around. I think that is hopefully a way of the past. Well, this doesn't happen too often. There are some times where I want the tripod to be super low to the ground. It'd be really cool to have a different perspective, maybe a bottoms up type of view. But with traditional tripods, um, you're really limited to how high the center column is. So I can bring the legs, yes, all the way down to here. Like this is pretty low, but I still have this height from the center column. Uh, so this is as low as it goes, but with the Peak Design Travel tripod, you can remove this column completely, move the head so that it comes down and then you can shoot pretty much all the way down here, which is pretty cool. And the other thing about the ball head I haven't touched on yet is the idea of going vertical. So shooting portrait is extremely annoying, which is why people get L plates so that you can just flip it around and it'll automatically be in uh, portrait mode. The problem with tripods is this. Uh, most tripods and their ball heads only have one notch in here that goes down, which means this is the only spot where you can bring your ball head around in vertical position. Um, so that's one problem, that kind of sucks. You need to make sure you rotate it around in a way where you're oriented the right way and then, okay, I can set up my camera. The other part that is really stupid about these tripods is the fact that you got this little knob up here. So if you bring this down with your camera, you're not fully vertical because this knob is in the way and you can't bring it uh, that, that full angle over. So what you gotta do is actually flip the camera around and shoot this way. But if that doesn't work with where your shutter release is, you might have to turn it around and, and go this way. It's, it's this whole procedure, really, really annoying. So you need to make sure the knob is at the top so it doesn't hit anything, and then you can go vertical. Um, it's, it's a real pain in the ass, trust me. And so really appreciate that with the Peak Design Travel tripod that they've really thought about it. It's, it's really a full ball that you can go vertical anywhere you want. And I think that's going to be a really big, uh, big feature that you're going to love. All right, so let's close things off with some final thoughts. I think I've talked about all the amazing things about the Peak Design Travel tripod, but what are some of the things that concern me? So these are some things I think you guys want to think about. One, because I already have a tripod that's incredibly small, incredibly light, I think I was a bit disappointed by the specs of the Peak Design Travel Tripod in that it is heavier than what I have here. So this is only two pounds. It's incredibly light, which I love about it. Um, the Peak Design one is 2.8. Uh, and so it's, it's a little bit heavier. And I think that that's the kind of weight that you're gonna be feeling. Um, I think the packed height, um, once it's packed down, is going to be a little bit smaller than this, but not by, by much. Uh, once it's fully open, it's about the same, so it doesn't really make much of a difference. I think the big thing that is a key differentiator between uh, you know really lightweight ones like this is that because the Peak Design is heavier, it can handle more load. So 20 pounds versus this, which can only handle 13 pounds. So that is a trade-off that you're going to make. The other thing I wasn't too sure about was, um, was really with legs. So with five sections, five is more than three, which means I need to close the clips for five on each of the three legs, uh, which is more than three here. And is the clips going to be more cumbersome than the twisting motion that I have with these tripods? That part I'm not too sure about. If you're used to twisting, it, are you gonna be able to go to closing the clips a lot uh, easier or harder? That's hard to say. I'm also wondering, is, is five better than three? Is there uh, an advantage from a tripod perspective that gives you more flexibility in terms of 
uh, notched heights and things like that. I'm not sure, um, but overall, I think I'm really excited about the ball head. That's gonna be the, the game changer here. And ultimately, if you were to make a decision about this product, it'll be because of ease of use. By being on the field and being able to not be confused by the knobs, by not have knobs like get in the way of things, quick release, deploy really quickly, close it up really quickly, and it puts it, uh, you can put it in your backpack just like that. Anyways, I hope this video was helpful for you guys. It was meant to really go through my own struggles with tripods and where I think uh, the Peak Design Travel tripod is really going to make its mark. Uh, drop comments, questions down below because that's gonna really help me figure out what to do in my next video, especially once I get the product in my hands, which I hope is soon, then I'll be able to actually test it in the field and, and answer those questions that you have. Anyways, uh, support me by clicking on the link for the Kickstarter and and order yours today. I think, uh, again, it's a great product uh, that you're going to love um, and, and just continues the legacy of Peak Design. Anyways, this is Will from Going Awesome Places. I'll see you guys in the next one.